Another question that everyone's been asking is, um, are you doing anything with Casey and 368? That question literally came up, like I got tweeted that probably like 200 times. So the answer to that, I know that YouTube collapse happened all the time, but man, this one really got to me. I was literally holding my breath for the full six minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, I mean, I- Yes, it, yes. The answer to that is a strong, resounding yes. Is that good, or do you want me to just kind of gamble with no, that? No, no, that was good, I felt that. And then it was here that I asked myself, why do I care about these two dudes? Was there something different in how they collaborated with each other? So I decided to investigate. Maybe we'll learn a thing or two about how we can collaborate with others to the same effect as well. So I actually did my first collab a couple days ago, but man, do I wish I know what I know now from studying Peter and Casey. Anyhow, if you're new here, I do breakdowns of vloggers and storytellers so we can all learn how to make better vlogs. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. So at first glance, what Peter and Casey does seem pretty standard. They hang out, they do Q&A, they do something fun together. That is until I stopped looking at their collab as a collab at all. Instead, I started looking at them as secondary characters being introduced in each other's stories. Just bear with me for a second. In a book by John Shruby, The Anatomy of Story, he says, the subplot character has a very precise function in a story, and it involves the comparative method. The subplot is used to contrast how the hero and a second character deal with the same problem in slightly different ways and with different results. So basically, in good stories, characters shouldn't be chosen at random. Instead, good stories surround the main characters with characters that are essentially different versions of themselves in regards to the central struggle and the central theme of the story. In an example that I found from writer Brian McDonald, two of the three little pigs are clones of the last one. It is the failure of the first two pigs that allows us to measure the success of the last pig. Sorry Peter and Casey, I hope you guys don't take offense with me comparing you guys with the three little pigs. Anyway, I think if you've looked at your favorite movies, you'll find that a lot of stories will have characters echoing each other. And without giving spoilers away, Thanos' sacrifice in Infinity War actually is reflected with multiple characters in the story. Think about it. And if you haven't seen it, go, go see it. Hurry up. Back to Peter and Casey. So when I looked at the collab through the lens of characters comparing with each other in a story, it became immediately clear that they weren't just hanging out, doing Q&A and just having fun. Almost every beat of their vlog is about comparing themselves with each other on how to vlog. Now let's take a look at how they actually did it. First, the setup. They do this by setting up their main difference first. So I'm obviously into shooting b-roll and slow motion and transitions and like heavy into the sound design, that kind of thing. Whereas Casey is very strong at, at storytelling. And then from Casey's point of view, Casey mentioned something that I found actually quite fascinating that doesn't necessarily align with what I do all the time, but it could be something that I adapt more into my own filmmaking. This is that tip. This is the Casey tip. I think a lot of people would push back against this, but I think, especially if you're a YouTuber or a vlogger, that perfection can often get in the way of productivity. So my rule is never let perfection get in the way of good enough. So there's like a shot back there on the bridge, I was trying to shoot a time lapse. It wasn't perfect, but I was like, it. Let me just get this okay shot because I'd rather get like four okay scenes than one perfect scene because four okay scenes equals a story. One perfect scene is like, these people are so kind to wait. <laughs> the truth is there are few YouTubers on the platform whose cinematography and just camera skills I think is like so much better than mine and you are one of those people and I want to like absorb some of it is some of your your crazy camera skill set to make my videos better this becomes a little more apparent when you watch Casey's vlog obviously when you see both you can see how the two vloggers shoot the same thing differently but where it gets super interesting is when they get to the bike ride first in Peter's video I'm just gonna keep my backpack on but I got to put this away so that I don't die in the streets I'll be right back Dude, look at my pants. I got you, man. I got you. Peter's amazing, but heavy gear got into the way of their bike ride story. And when we finally get on the bike ride, we're shown the consequence of what Casey's original tip was all about. Casey, how is it you can vlog and There's ride? a child coming at you. How can you vlog and ride anything? 
I'd love to know that. So Casey was able to film the entire sequence while Peter wasn't able to. My thesis on vlogging is that I try to do the best production quality I can, but the story comes first, so I never let my camera get in the way of the story. And that's why I don't carry a monster like this, is because I don't feel like I could be spontaneous with such a beast. And then when you see Casey's video, you can see Casey making fun of Peter for the sheer size of his camera. Like, how do you... <laughs> this is his vlogging camera. It's not even a joke. This is, you how, could, you could this is how heavy this is. You, you could do it. Well, you hold it by one, of course. Better. Oh, come on. The truth is, it is Peter's skill set in cinematography and his hard work that got him to where he is. How long did it take you to get to your first million subscribers? Uh, wait for this, wait for it, wait for it. It took nine months. Come on, that's <laughs> insane. Yeah. Now compare that with Casey. I will say, without reservation, the first million is the hardest. The first million took me five years. The second million took me like five months. I'm not trying to say that one is better than the other. I am trying to say that they are different. And maybe it is because of this difference around the idea of how to vlog that makes this collaboration that special. And of course, the fact that they seem to genuinely like each other. I kind of think maybe this is too much. I feel like we crossed the line. I was feeling it right there as well. And shouting out to each other in multiple videos over a long period of time definitely helps. Peter McKinnon, this one's for you. So the next time you collab, consider how this person might be introduced as a character in your vlog. Don't just do your own thing. Think about how you guys are different. So remember what I was telling you about how I did my first collab two days ago? Collabs are hard. And I did not think about all these things that I just told you just now. I wish I did, but I didn't. I think what will happen is that it'll probably end up being like a what I wish I had done video. It's gonna be a fun one. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss that, as well as future breakdown videos. I'm gonna go edit it now. Wish me luck. So this one is scary because this one appeared in Final Destination 3. Oh, this is... Yeah, so sometimes if I'll find a song that I know I want to edit to, yeah. if I find it before I go, then it's like in my brain when I'm filming, I can kind of film to that theme. That makes sense. Yeah.